Welcome to challenge number five. So this challenge is more complex. Looking at the structure and trying to abstract it into simpler parts, you can see it has three main parts. It has the cylindrical view at the top. Then it has this bridge structure that joins the cylinder to the base. And then the base has these four holes inside of it and a cut that goes through the center. And the question I asked myself at the beginning is, which is the more complex part? Where would I first start? Would I start drawing the side view of the base? Would I go for the middle part or would I draw the cylinder first? I'm going to start with the middle part, the part that holds the cylinder, because I think that has the greatest degrees of freedom. So let's get started. Starting with a sketch line segment tool, I'm going to draw out the outline of the base of that bridge. And it'll become clearer to you in a minute what I'm doing. I'll constrain the orientation of these lines now. That one's vertical, that one needs to be vertical. And just remember as well that unless the line has a V or an H next to it, it isn't vertical or horizontal, it has to have that letter next to it. Let's put some measurements in. This one is 60 millimeters. And again, I like to put the measurement symbols outside of the shape. This one's 10. And both of these are the same, uh, same dimension. And so is that one. Now we've got four degrees of freedom left, so we need to state how long this line is. We now have three degrees of freedom left. And that's because I can slide this sideways. We need to state that these two are equal in length. So let's anchor the shape by clicking this point and the origin, and then click Constraint Point on Point. And we'll extrude by clicking this button here. And let's say how far we want to extrude. For now, I'm going to say 70, and I'll tell you why. The tangent from this line is going to intersect the cylinder at a lower height than 95, and that's why I've made this roughly 70. And then using that tangent line, I'm going to create a triangle, which will then cut through this shape to create this angled cut here. So follow me as I create a new work plane. I'm going to select these two lines and that point, click here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle that represents the outer diameter of the cylinder. So let's just create a circle and let's constrain the diameter of that circle to 70 millimeters. And now I can constrain the height of it to 60 millimeters. So if I draw a line from the center of the circle to this line over here, and it is horizontal, this now represents the plane that intersects the center of the cylinder as shown by the dotted line in the isometric drawing. I'll make this line into a guideline by clicking the G key on the keyboard. This circle currently has one degree of freedom to constrain the circle to be in the center between these two lines. I'm going to add a point anywhere I like, and I'm going to select that point and click this line and then hit the M key for midpoint. And if I rotate the model around, you can now see that that point is placed in between these two points on the work plane. I'm hitting W to go back into that work plane. Now I want the center of the circle to be vertical with respect to that point. So I click here, V, and now we have zero degrees of freedom. Now I can move on and create some guidelines. Now, if I create a line going from the center here to the line, and make this line horizontal. That represents the plane shown in the technical drawing that intersects the middle of the cylinder. I want that line to be a guideline, so I'll click G on my keyboard. The tangent line is a tangent to the circle at a point that's higher up than this line, somewhere around here. So I'll just click this line on the circle and change that line to a guideline. But to get the correct placement of this point and therefore the correct angle of this line, what I do is create another line going from this point to the middle of the circle. But then I need to constrain these two guidelines to have an angle between them of 90 degrees. Now that this angle here is 90 degrees, this is the correct tangent line that goes along the circle and down to the corner here. And I'll complete the contour by creating a triangle. 
I hope that wasn't too obfuscated. Now that we have zero degrees of freedom, I can extrude that triangle and take the difference in the property pane. And then making sure that the extruded point is flushed with this surface by clicking this button here, constraint point on plane. So the next thing I'm going to do now is create that cylinder. Let's create a new work plane. I'm selecting these two lines and that point. Let's create a circle and let's place it correctly at 60 millimeters above the bottom here. And I want the center of the circle to be in between these two points. So I'll select the center of the circle and this midpoint and say that I want them to be vertical to each other. Now let's constrain the diameter of the circle to be 70 millimeters. Now we have zero degrees of freedom and that means I can extrude the circle and then making sure that the extruded center of the cylinder is flushed against this surface by clicking constraint point on plane. And we've not finished there because we need to create a new work plane now. Now that we've extruded that, I'll click the center, create another circle and constrain the diameter to be 50 millimeters. So I can also extrude that by taking the difference this time and making sure that the extruded point is flushed against this surface. And now we've got our hollow cylinder there. The last thing we need to do now is create the base. So I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to create a new work plane. A little bit tricky. Those two lines and that point. Okay, create another rectangle. So the width of the rectangle has to be 80 millimeters and the height 120. Uh, to, uh, to center align this rectangle with respect to the bridge, what I can do as a quick fix is select a point, click on this line, or if you want, you can click anywhere in the work plane. I select the point on the line and hit M on your keyboard. I can then select another point, click here, select the line and the point, click the midpoint, and then I constrain, then I constrain the midpoint of this line to be vertical with respect to that point. Yeah, and that is supposed to be 35 millimeters. But if there are any problems, I can always go back in the workflow tree shown in the properties pane there. So I've got zero degrees of freedom at the moment, so let's extrude that base. So far that looks okay. I'll have to double check everything at the end though, just to make sure. I can now either create the holes or the cut at the side. I think I'll create the cut at the side. I'll create a new work plane, selecting these two lines and that point. Now let's select, and as you know, I don't like to draw rectangles directly over contour lines. So I've selected this line and that point, make them overlay each other. And I want the length of this line to be 60 millimeters got one degree of freedom left. Distance from here to that line has to be 30. 30 millimeters. Okay, let me just tidy this up a bit by dragging these uh, distance values outside of the shape. I can now extrude that using the difference function here in the, in the panel. That looks like it's flush, but just to make sure, I'll select the points here and that surface and actually tell soft space that wants me to be flush. Let's now create these four holes. So I'm going to create the final work plane, select these two lines and that point and click there. Let's select the circle tool. The diagram tells us we've got four holes, each with a diameter of 10 millimeters. And rather than um, defining the diameter for each one, I'm just going to select these two and state that they're equal in length. So select these two and these two. Actually, uh, I'll do these two. So the distance between these two has to be 50 and they have to be horizontal to one another. And the same thing with these two and also the distances between them is 50. Now you can't see them. But if I hover the mouse over here, uh, it highlights them. We've got four degrees of freedom. I need to say that these two circles are vertical to each other. 
if I stated that these two were vertical to each other, I would get an error now because um, it's redundant. So I'm adding too many constraints in there. And solve space will warn you uh, if you do that. And if I look at the diagram, uh, we've got 15. So this distance from there to there should be 15. And we've got two degrees of freedom left. And also the distance from the center of the circles to the edge edges here are also 15. And the same thing on this side. So now we've got zero degrees of freedom, and that means we can extrude the model. And you can see that we've got uh, some errors here highlighted in red, but since we're going to take the difference, they'll disappear because we're going in the opposite direction. I'll select the extruded center circle and that plane, and I want them to be flushed with each other. And there we have it. That is the final structure. So a quick summary of the workflow. I took a step back and abstracted the model into three parts, a cylinder, a bridge joining the cylinder, and then a base part at the bottom. I then focused on the more complex part, which was for me, the bridge. When I created the general structure for the bridge, I then created the angled cut. And then finally, the simpler parts was just creating the cylinder and then the base parts. I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I try and enjoy these tutorials and I'll see you in challenge six.